Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. Here we are. Hopefully, this will be our conclusion. This is week five and part five of our workbench build. Well, when we left last week's show, we had just clipped on the outer tool well wall and uh, glued it all in place with those half blind dovetails. And uh, it looks great. You can see it here sitting behind me. Um, everything looks great. I still haven't unclamped it. But the next thing we need to do is we need to um, mill out some wood for the bottom or the floor of the tool well, if you will. And uh, going through the plans, uh, I, I don't know. They call for plywood. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm well over 70 hours of labor into this thing. I got maple coming out the wazoo. It's a solid maple bench, and you guys are going to turn around and throw plywood. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. So what I've got is I've got a bunch of offcuts from the resaw um, that I've been able to save throughout this whole build. And I'm going to plane all those down, and I need a piece 3 eighths of an inch thick. So what I'm looking at doing is maybe playing them down to 3 sixteenths and then laminating two pieces together and it'll still be ply, but it'll be two ply and it'll be maple. So what I've got here now is a bunch of, uh, of these offcuts from the resaw and I've planed them down to 3 sixteenths of an inch. And what I'm going to do is I've got them cut to various widths so that the joints will overlap and I'm going to laminate these together and uh, that will give us the bottom of our tool well and of course it'll be maple so it'll match right in with the bench as opposed to uh, you know throwing a piece of plywood in there and with that now we wait for that glue up to be dry and uh, when I come back I guess I'll be cutting that tool well bottom to, uh, to size. We're getting close to assembly, guys. Honest. Now that the glue up is dry, we need to cut it down to its final dimensions. And then once we get that done, we're going to install the bottom of that tool well uh, into our bench top. Well, I've got the tool well bottom cut uh, to its size, and now it just sits in this dado that we cut earlier, and uh, due to its length here, there we go. I was going to say it might be a little finicky to get in there, but what we need to do is mark a line 3 16 of an inch in, because that's as far as this tool well is going to be inserted into this 3 8 dado three sixteenths of an inch. And then once we get that in our position, we're going to go along and drill and countersink every six inches and fasten it in place with some number eight by inch and a quarter screws. And with that now our tool well floor or bottom is in. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that after I had it all installed I noticed I've got a little bit of tear out. Um, and I'll be looking for a way to repair that, but for now I'm going to move right along. Um, the next step in this whole build really is the uh, base assembly or the legs and the stretchers that we made in, I think it was, uh, oh, uh, six months ago. Um, we're going to put that together now and uh, bring it over and start putting them on the bench to assemble everything. Now, I'm not sure if you remember or not, I barely remember, but a while back when we did the legs, we also cut these filler blocks. And what these filler blocks are, are extensions of our uh, leg assembly. And I've got the entire uh, leg framework sitting on the skirts, being this front skirt and this back skirt. 
And these here, like I think I said, are a little proud. Um, we need an inch clearance, or sorry, a 1 8 inch clearance on either side, so I've cut that. And that's for seasonal movement of the, uh, the wood. These particular spacers now are going to get planed down so that they are level with the skirts. So as soon as we can slide this snugly underneath this leg, then we've planed it enough. So I'm going to go ahead and plane these off and get them set in their positions. Well, I've got the filler block planed at least on the right side of the bench. Uh, and like I said before, you want it to be snug. So <clears throat> it fits in there nicely. I've marked it for how it goes as far as its orientation is. And now I'm going to go ahead and plane the, uh, the one for the left side of the bench. We've got everything positioned in the places that we want it. And what we're going to do now is just with a square, we're going to get in here and mark the position of these filler blocks because now we have to take the stand down and we're going to actually uh, we're going to have to drill these filler blocks and install them onto the stand so we just want to make sure that we've got them in the right position so we're just going to mark them and then we'll uh, we'll get into marking the the hole that we need to drill so I've had to shift this over to the other side of the shop. Seems I ran out of room on the other side. But we've got our filler blocks in place. Uh, we've lined them up with the lines that we put there earlier with the square in that last segment. And now we need to go ahead and glue these filler blocks into place. So we're going to glue them, clamp them, and then uh, we'll come back. Well, we got those filler blocks glued in, squeeze out is cleaned up, and now we wait for that to dry. But for the next step, what we're going to need is some one inch diameter dowels, two of them two inches long. I don't have any, so we're heading to the lathe. I'm going to spin some one inch dowels over here, and then uh, we're going to go back to the assembly of the legs to the bench. And there we have our one inch dowel, so I'm going to go ahead, cut this into two inch lengths, and then I'm going to get myself a helper, and uh, we're going to move on to the next step. So you can see we've got the filler block glued to the top of the leg assembly. Uh, you've got the long side here and the short side here. This is the front of the bench. So we need to drill a quarter inch hole, half an inch deep, centered, three and five-eighths of an inch back from the front of the bench. So we'll go ahead and drill those quarter-inch holes. So now we've got the quarter-inch holes drilled in the filler blocks. Now we need a couple of dowel centers. And uh, just so happen to have a couple in my pocket. So you want to insert them into those holes. Now we're going to take it over to the bench top core and uh, flip this assembly upside down and these dowel centers will now transfer our marks for where we need to drill the core of the bench. So I've turned the leg assembly upside down onto the bench and you can see here I've got a filler block that's preventing my dowel center from touching the base here. That way it's not transferring a mark until I get it set in place. So once we're happy with the positioning of it, we just want to lower it into position, make sure everything is lined up, and then once we get it lined up, we'll just give this a firm wrap with a dead blow hammer, and the pin of the dowel center will transfer our mark onto this main core here, and that's where we will be drilling the one inch diameter holes for that one inch dowel that we just cut. So we've got it there in place and just give it a little wrap with the mallet.
And now I'll just lift this up and out of the way. Actually, I'll bring it towards me here just so I can zoom in and show you guys the mark. And we'll just lower it down just like that. I don't know if you can see that, but right there is the mark from the dowel center. Um, on, on camera it may not translate very well, but in person it's quite prominent. So now what we're going to do is drill a one inch diameter hole one inch deep into the core and the corresponding hole will be one inch deep um, where our dowel centers are. So we'll go ahead and drill those two holes and carry on from there. The holes are drilled, the dowel pieces are in place and now we'll just get the leg assembly and sit it on top here and just make sure everything fits together properly. And just like that, it fits in place. Well, I've given the underside of the bench uh, thorough sanding, and as you just saw, I branded my mark in the legs. Um, I'm only doing it now just because it's easier access. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip this thing over and set it in place and uh, we're going to begin the work on the vices. And with that the bench top is assembled onto the legs. And let me tell you this thing is dead solid. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to working on the front vise and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mill the jaw for that and once I get that jaw milled we're going to install the front vise. So I've got two pieces milled up for the jaws of the front vise. Uh, it calls for two and a half inch thick stock just like the legs so two pieces these are 20 inches long a uh, little longer than I need but I will be trimming them up so inch and a quarter thick each I'm going to laminate these together and then what we're going to start doing is uh, moving on and milling all the parts for the uh, tail vise. Now, of course, you don't need to see me mill all of those, so I'm going to go ahead, mill all those parts, cut them all to size, and then when I come back, this should be cut to size. We're going to chamfer it, drill some dog holes, and uh, or bench dog holes, and we're going to start assembling things. Well, I've got all the pieces milled now and cut to their final dimensions for the tail vise. Um, did all this while I was waiting for the front vise jaw to dry. Um, but it's still not dry, and that's okay because I'm done in the shop for the day. So, when I come back to you next time, um, we're going to start with the front vise getting that jaw cut to its final size and getting the front jaw assembled and put together. Okay, moving right along here, the glue up for the jaws of the front vise is dry. So now we're going to take it over to the jointer, joint the one edge square to the face, and cut it down to its final dimensions. We've now got it cut to our final dimension of five and a half by 17, but now in the front face of it, we need to do a one inch 45 degree chamfer on each one of these corners. So we're going to head over to the table saw and take care of that. Now that we've got those chamfers cut in the front of the vise jaws, we need to align our jaws um, and clamp it temporarily onto the front skirt of the bench. And it's going to align right to the edge of this end clamp here. So we've got this in line, we've got it clamped in place, and now we need to transfer those marks um, for the uh, screw mechanism and the guide rods of this vise onto our jaws. And we'll just go ahead now and, and do that. Well, we've got those holes marked, and we just did it the same way we did earlier with uh, the template and just marking the centers uh, with a with a scratch all or a punch or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead, take it over to the drill press, and we're going to drill those holes for the screw center and the guide rods. 
now that you got your holes drilled in here, what you want to do is you want to take your vise assembly and slide it into the holes that you just drilled, just like that. And then, as we did before now, clamp this temporarily to the front of your bench. So you'll slide these guide rods through and then you'll temporarily clamp this all together. Well, we've got the bench flipped upside down here and we have our uh, jaw clamped back into place and we've got the mechanism placed in. Now, different plans call for different vices and this one here apparently doesn't uh, quite fit the plan and I think that should have been evident to me when I had to do these cutouts here and the uh, the extra boring but what happened is the guide rods are actually too long and they bump into the tool well so not to be discouraged I just did some counter bores in the back end of the tool well to uh, give it that little extra play so that we can get that in there properly so now that we have that in place we're going to slide our guide rods into here and screw our vise all the way in. And now we've gone ahead and in the different uh, pre-drilled holes, there are five of them here, we've uh, installed the body of the vise uh, onto the underside of the bench using some uh, quarter inch by two inch lag bolts and some washers. Um, now we're going to go ahead and um, install the screws that will hold the jaw onto the front of the vise. We now have this front assembly screwed on and uh, we're just testing it for smoothness and it runs very smoothly um, which is great that means that everything's lined up properly uh, even with having to drill these counter bores here which you can see a little more clearly now but what we need to do now is pull this assembly apart and those collars to the guide rods um, we need to now screw those in. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in place and we'll mount those where they go. And with that the vise is installed and uh, what we're going to do now is we'll just flip this whole tabletop back over and uh, although it sounds a little counterproductive we need to take this back apart again and uh, what we need is to get this jaw out of here. So before I remove this jaw what I've done is these dog holes here I've used a square and extended the center lines out to my uh, jaw and I'd like to drill another dog hole three, eight, or th uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter down through this jaw vise. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this jaw vise and we need to put a two degree chamfer on the inside of the jaw and I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we have our jaw and I've done our bench dog holes. <clears throat> now like I said we need a two degree chamfer on the bottom of the inside of this jaw and what that does is it allows it so that your top surface is always in contact. Um, what we're going to do in order to accomplish that, if we need to run this through the surface planer, or the thickness planer rather, just like this, and we need to take off a chamfer off the bottom, it would only dictate that we need to lift that up into the blade. So in order to get a two degree chamfer, or a two degree bevel I guess we might say, or a taper, or use whatever term you want. But you need a 3 32nd inch piece of wood and that's what you need to raise it on that one edge. And then by running that through the planer now, taking off that 3 32nd until we come to this side, that will give us a two degree bevel if you will. So I'm going to get some clear packing tape and I'm going to tape this 3 32nd inch shim onto the back or the front side I guess it is of this jaw and then we're going to run it through the surface planer to get our taper. And with that the slope is on there and it took all of three light passes um, with that shim to get that two degree uh, taper on this jaw. 
So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remount it all. And uh, once I get it remounted, I'll show you exactly what that taper looks like. Now we'll just pull this in here, and you can see that that two degree slope really isn't that much. But it does make it so that there's a tiny gap down here, but up here we're tight. And that will ensure that your piece always grips. You can see that it'll pull it in as you tighten it and really give that good grip at the top of the jaw. So that's actually uh, that's perfect the way we've got it there and that is the installation of the front vise. Um, the only thing that we're missing here at this point now is a handle and we'll come to that later. So now that we've got the front vise installed, minus the handle, now we need to work on the tail vise. And the first thing we need to do is take the top guide plate of our tail vise and place it onto one of the core pieces that uh, we cut much earlier. And if you're following along or using a, a pair of, or a set of prints, you'll understand what I mean. But what we need to do is to place this um, guide plate on the top of um, this core piece centered on it and just mark the lines around here and you want to make sure that the inside of the groove is flush with the edge of the board here. So once we get that done what we're going to do is we're going to take the trim router and we're going to route out a recess here that's going to house this plate. And there we have the recess cut and this sits flush and we'll just check it on this side and as you can see the edge of that groove lines up with the edge of this board. So now that we've got that done we'll move on to the next step. The next thing we need to do is take one of our um, end blocks that will be part of this tail vise and we need to drill a, a through hole at an inch and a quarter diameter uh, that will accept the, the rod that will go through this. So um, let's go ahead and drill that inch and a quarter hole to the dimensions on the print. So we now have our hole drilled and we need to glue this assembly together. And we'll take our two M blocks, glue them in place, and glue our top and our bottom core pieces uh, together. We're going to use some small finishing nails just to help us hold the whole thing while it's gluing. So we have this main assembly uh, glued and clamped together now and as you probably saw I chose to go with a brad nailer as opposed to finishing nails. The only reason I chose it was for speed. Um, I figured that hammering on here would knock things out of alignment with the glue. So a fast little pull of the trigger and everything was set and no worries. So I'm going to put this aside now and what we're going to do is get our mounting block. And on the thinner side, this is inch and a half thick, centered on here we're going to drill a 5 16 hole through at two inches in Sorry. from each one of these ends. Well here we are at the right front of the bench and this is that three-quarter dado that we extend it through the end cap and of course is the front skirt. So our mounting block will get placed tight up against our end cap and it will be tight up against our front skirt and it will sit flush with our top core here and once we get that into place what we're going to do is just clamp it in place there and we need to mark those 5 16 holes that we just drilled and once we get them marked we are going to uh, drill a quarter inch pilot hole and once we get those pilot holes drilled we're going to glue and screw this into place with some 5 16 inch uh, lag bolts. Now 
We now need to remove this uh, vise assembly here off of the back plate. And the reason for this is we need to mark some holes here in order to, um, to drill that mounting block that we just finished mounting. So once we get this apart and all the glue was dried on that mounting block, um, we'll take it over, clamp it in place, and mark for our drill holes. Now with the mounting block glued and dried in place, you need this back plate positioned a half an inch back from the end of the bench and 15 sixteenths down from the top. From there you can mark your mounting holes and the hole for the bolt that holds the entire threaded assembly. Well we marked all the screws but <clears throat> all we've drilled or uh, done pilot holes for is the top left and the bottom right. We've also done a one inch diameter countersink um, there which is going to accept the nut because of course we've bolted our nut back onto our plate. So with that being said now we're going to go ahead and attach this plate to our bench and then once we get this attached uh, we've got some other adjustments that we need to uh, start taking care of with the top guide plates and uh, that assembly here that we glued up earlier. And with that, we're going to have to call it a wrap on another one. I don't, I don't know how we got to this half an hour again, but I was actually hoping to wrap it up this week. Apparently not. Uh, one more episode, guys, and then that will be it for this build. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.